Hey friend, I'm headed to the craft room to work on some thrift store makeovers and I want you to join me. Let's get started. My name is Cindy and I'm with reinventeddelaware.com. If you're new here, I'm so glad you found us. And if you've been here before, welcome back. We have several projects that we're going to work on today and let's start off with this frame that I've already made over before in another video. I'll link that down in the description. For now, I wanna change it. So I grabbed some colors that I thought I could mix and make a really beautiful rich brown. But turns out that didn't work out so good. So I went to the Dixie Belle website and they have a color mixer and you can take any colors that you have on hand, mix them together and get the color that you're looking for. That's exactly what I wanted, this deep rich brown. It almost looks black, but it's brown because there's part of the image that I'm going to put on the inside of this frame that has that brown in it, and I really did want it to match. Next up, we have these corbels that I found on a recent shopping trip. I was with one of my sisters and my mom, and we went to a vintage shop. I'll link that video down below too, so you can see that shopping trip. But I found these little corbels. They have that hole in there for a dowel rod, and I have a plan for these. I'm not sure it's gonna happen, for this video, but I am going to get them painted and made over to just look a little bit more vintage. I used a black chalk paint that has a built-in primer and sealer, so all I have to do is paint them. And I'm using this little artist brush because there is a lot of details, a lot of details on these corbels and I really wanna get in there. Now it looks pretty rough because it's the first coat and almost always the first coat is rough looking with any kind of paint that you use. So I do have to go back and apply a second coat. The same day I was out shopping for those corbels, I also was shopping at a vintage store and I found this adorable little mold. I think it's a jelly mold. It's very small in size in comparison to the ones that I've seen before. I just love these little things. And this was the easiest makeover today. All I had to do was wash it and dry it and then I filled it up with my Redmond salt. It goes beside my stove and it replaced that one there I've been using for a long time. Anyway, I like to keep a little bowl of salt right next to my cooking area so I can season the food as I go. And if you have to have salt sitting out, it might as well look cute, right? I better warn you, I'm a project jumper. I go from project to project to project. That is just how my mind works. That's how I like to create. So I went from that salt shaker holder, sorry about that, to these weights. Yes, those are hand weights. They're bright red, they're two pounds each, and they're ugly. I keep them in my bathroom. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I keep them in my bathroom and I don't want them red because they don't go with my decor. So I'm going to paint them. And the first thing I thought would be best is if I put a really good bonding primer on them. So I grabbed that bonding boss and gave them one full coat and a second coat later. While the hand weights dry, I'm going to go ahead and put the second coat of paint on this little frame. Now it's, the second coat just really enriches that color. The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the interior section of this frame because I have a plan for it and I wanna get an exact measurement. Then I used a piece of copy paper from my printer and I cut it down to that size with this printer that has that wire right there that acts as a guide. You can see exactly where the cutter is going to go on the paper and here in a few minutes, you're going to see that really makes a difference. I'm going to have that paper cutter linked down below. This is my new favorite tool. I did a little dry run with that scrap piece of paper in the frame to make sure that it would fit exactly. I did have to shave off just a little bit more. And then I folded it in half for both ways, long ways and sideways to get a center point. And I took this printout, and I'm gonna tell you about that printout here in a second but I used it as a guide to get it centered exactly. And then I moved over to that paper cutter and that wire that I just told you about was very important because it helped me to see exactly where I was cutting these two pieces of white paper. The new artwork that I'm putting in this frame is actually a free offer that I have for you when you join my email list at reinventeddelaware.com. You sign up and then you gain access to a free printable library and it includes this design along with lots of other designs. I've had so much fun making this library. I have printable art like this, greeting cards, gift tags, all sorts of things just like that. And that's what you can do with one of these pieces of art. You can grab a thrift store frame, some Mod Podge. <laughs> Did you notice that I said it right this time? Anyway, you grab some Mod Podge, 
that printable artwork that you've printed on watercolor paper. I'll leave a blog post that tells you all about it. And then you can add it to this frame and you have an instant piece of art. You'll notice that I put that Mod Podge in the corners first because I wanted to make sure that this very heavy watercolor paper would adhere well all the way around. Then I used my fingers and I just smoothed it out and I did have to keep wiping off my fingers because I was getting Mod Podge and I didn't want that on the front of the artwork. I've been collecting little birds and making them over and I just think they're so cute. So I found this one, I think it was about a dollar and I decided to do this whole baking soda thing where you mix the baking soda with some chalk paint and then you dab it on to create some texture. And that's what I did with that same dark brown color that I used on the frame. Now, forewarning, I am not thrilled with how this project turned out, but I kept trying and kept trying, so stay tuned to see what I do with this little bird. While that coat of paint dries on the bird, I'm headed back to the hand weights because the primer is all dry and I've added this really pretty color that will look nice in my bathroom. So I have a question for you. Are you in the age group like I am in your 60s where the bottom part of your arm is starting to wiggle a lot? Like, Give me a hands up emoji if that's what's happening to you. I have my hands raised up right now because, oh my goodness, where are these bat wings coming from? They're driving me crazy. So I have these hand weights and a goal of doing some arm exercises in the mornings. That's why I want them to look pretty on my bathroom counter. I have two repurposed lampshade projects for you and this is the first one. Now this lampshade's pretty large. It's kind of a rectangle shape and there at the bottom it measures a good 18 inches. I mean it's fairly large. So I just started off of course ripping off the fabric. It was in bad shape. It was pretty dirty and I didn't want this look for what where this lampshade's going to be hanging. I, I just gave away a secret. Anyway, I didn't want this kind of a look for where it will ultimately end up. So I grabbed my scissors and I just started cutting and ripping off the fabric until it was all the way removed. You see it there in the background. Then I grabbed some canvas type of fabric. It's real heavy. One of my friends, her name is Karen. She makes gorgeous slip covers and she's, she gave me all of these scraps left over from the slip covers that she makes and I decided to use them. It just so happened that some of the colors coordinate exactly with my home, so thanks Karen for that. I started off by cutting these pieces in these long strips as long as I could, because these are scraps, so you have to work with what you've got. But they are in different colors, they all coordinate, and they're about an inch wide and the length of the lampshade. Then I started tying on the strips. Now I was able to work around this in kind of a pattern because of the wire framing. Actually, y'all have told me that that's called ribbing on a frame, that the long part vertical pieces are called the ribbing. So thanks for telling me that. I just used this really heavy duty canvas fabric and I tied knots to secure it onto the frame all the way around and I, I did sort of do a pattern like I said with the colors and I tried to space them evenly and, and like that but it's also this is a handmade thing I don't want it perfect I like the frayed edges I like the tied knots the whole look is exactly what I was going for we'll get back to that lampshade here in a minute let's work on this so this is an old spindle that I just had laying around in my workshop and my hubby did a little favor for me he drilled a really wide hole and then he used a metal conduit electrical conduit and stuck it in there and used like an adhesive so that it would be secure and it dried overnight now he did that out in his workshop when it was dark so thanks to my hubby for doing that and I wanted to keep this same original chippy paint finish. So I used gator hide because this piece is going outside. This gator hide will act as a glue to help hold in all that chippy goodness for a, a very long time. So I'm looking forward to that. I applied two coats and then I leaned it up in the sunshine outside up against my hose and I just let it dry and bake right on out in the sun. Back to this little bird. It's all dry. There's the dark color and I haven't completely given up hope yet, so what I'm going to try to do is to metal leaf this little bird. And you use this metal leaf adhesive, you paint it on in the area where you want the metal leaf to stick, and then you have to let it set for about 30 minutes and it creates a tacky finish. 
not wet like right here this is very wet so you just paint it on in the areas where you want it and then you are going to apply the metal leaf to it we'll get to that I also have this very old um, brass candlestick and yes I could probably get some earth bright and give it a nice polish I just wanted to try something different so while I have that metal leafing glue out I decided to add it in the areas that I wanted the gold leaf to sit so that has to sit for 30 minutes and in the meantime let's get back to this frame I told you I am a project jumper so I grabbed some gold gilding wax and a paper towel and I just hit the high spots with it this gives a really pretty vintage look we've done this before on this channel this is one of my favorite techniques that one of my daughters taught me how to do. Such an easy technique. And then you can even see, I just started using my finger. I thought, what the heck? Let's just go for it and use our finger and get a little bit messy and have some fun. I also added it to those corbels and look how you can see the details. It brings it out so well. I'm going to have this gold gilding wax linked down below because I think you need it. The best way to wash up after you've done a project like that is with this scrubby soap. It has a scrubber on one side and a citrus-based soap on the other. It's very mild on your hands and it will take off anything, paint and that gold gilding wax, furniture wax. It scrubs up your hands and you don't have to worry about it hurting your skin. The leafing adhesive has dried enough that I can start to add the gold leaf to it. Actually, this is silver leaf that I have here. And all you do is you take these sheets of the leaf and it's very, very, very paper thin. So don't sneeze because you'll have a mess. And you just dab it onto the areas where you have the, the adhesive. Then you can go back with a little paintbrush and just scuff off all that you can where it's not, where you don't have the adhesive and it will just come right off. I had scraps you see there. I'm not going to waste that. So I scoop it up with the paintbrush and then I can apply it to other areas on this little bird. We're really trying with this little bird, but I don't know. Stay tuned to see how it turns out. As I added this silver leaf, the more I added, the less I liked the whole look. Like I really was not happy at this point. So I grabbed this little fine grade sanding paper and I thought, well, I'll just rough it up and, and take some of it off and smooth the edges and make it look antique and you know, all that stuff that we love here. And it just wasn't working. I mean, I just kept sanding and sanding and, and I even got a little scraper out and was scraping and I mean everything and nothing. But then I grabbed this the candlestick that we had put the adhesive on and I decided to try the same thing. Now I love how this turned out and I might use this again in the future, especially on metal that looks pretty bad. I mean, this could really do something for it. So stay tuned for some future projects. I just took pieces of that gold leaf, put it where the adhesive was, and then I grabbed that little paintbrush and I brushed off the excess and that was it. A little word of encouragement. If you're working on a project and it's not going like you want it to go, just keep pressing on because sometimes it might not work out exactly like you want it, but you might get another creative idea. And it's actually the process of working through these kind of issues that helps you to get more creative, to come up with solutions and create a look that you love. The clear coat is dry on that spindle so I brought it in the house and on the opposite side of where that conduit pole was I marked an X to find the center. Now it just so happened that there was already a hole right there so I really didn't even need to mark the center. This doesn't have to be exact. This is just a little thing going out in the yard. The other thing that my husband did while he was assembling those parts is he drilled this hole for me. So he's a nice drill press and he was able to get the exact center of it and bring it down onto that pewter plate and do this, this hole for me. The next step I just grabbed, this is, oh, he also gave me this star head screw and I had to find the right bit to fit in it. So that's what you see me doing there was finding the right bit. Then I grabbed this ratcheting screwdriver and it's nice because it will, well, you know what ratcheting is. You turn it and you turn it and it goes back for you so you have less friction on your wrist. It really is a help. So what I did was I started to get that screw in mostly and then I started to get it into this little post 
and I really struggled. So I, I try, I'm laughing because I kept trying this and I tried that and I stood it upright and I thought, well, I'll use my body to help hold the thing up and I'll get it in there. I mean, I was determined and persistent. Finally, I laid the post on the craft table and this was it. This is how you want to attach this kind of thing. Not the way I started out because it was holding it steady. So I'm chuckling at myself. You go right ahead and chuckle with me. I finally got it pretty close and then I grabbed the Gorilla Glue and I used it there in that section. I had to get a skewer and add the glue. The lid on my glue bottle's broken, but I'm not gonna waste the glue that's in there. So I got a little skewer and I got the glue in there and then I finished tightening down that screw until it all squeezed out and I knew it was really secure. This is going to hold. I let it sit and dry overnight. I felt pretty accomplished after that last project. So I thought, okay, Cindy, tackle this little bird again, add some furniture wax, and that will help to create a softer look on those edges and of the silver leaf and you'll like it then. So I did that and I still wasn't crazy about it, but I went ahead and applied the wax to the little candlestick that I had the silver leaf on. I think I keep calling it gold leaf. This is obviously silver leaf. So forgive me for that. Anyway, I pressed on and I pressed on. I kept looking at that bird and I thought, okay, get some gilding wax in silver and that'll fix this problem. And I used the gilding wax in the areas thinking, well, it'll just look better if I add more and more and more. <laughs> anyway, I feel bad for this little bird. It was really putting up with a lot from me. So keep watching. I know I keep saying that, but keep watching. Let's see what we can do with this little bird. So I thought, well, let's attach the bird to this candlestick because they're kind of similar because of that silver leaf. And anyway, that's what I did. I put some hot glue around that so that the bird would sit right on top of that candlestick and I could, it would just give it some, um, you know, it would adhere slightly. And if I want to remove it, I can. Back to this lampshade. Now, ultimately, this lampshade is going to be hanging on my front porch as a light over top of an area where my husband and I sit a lot. So I grabbed a basket that I had on hand and some Christmas lights that I had on hand, and I'm going to make this into a little light fixture. I pulled the plug through the bottom of that basket. I really had to wrestle with it. You know, who has arthritic hands? Raise your hand if you do, because it it's hard to do this kind of thing with hands that don't work properly. So I stuffed all the lights in there and I think that it would look better if I had brown lights, but I'm using what I have on hand, so there's that. I grabbed some twine and I just kind of laced it back and forth, back and forth to create like a base for those lights because this basket is going to turn upside down and I don't want those lights falling out, obviously, so that'll just act as a way of kind of holding them in. Next, I used some more of the jute as a way of securing that upside down basket to the top part of the lamp. And I just went around several times and I tied it on just to hold it still. You can see I've got that plug ready. So that's an important part of this project. I also had this black chain on hand left over from a project a long time ago. And I just looped the jute twine around that to secure it on. I maybe should have used a twist tie, not a twist tie, you know, the zip tie, but I like just using what's right there. Anyway, you can see that basket was kind of moving around a little bit. So I decided to add more jute twine at the ends of the basket just to secure it a little bit more and hold it steady. And that did seem to work. Let's head out to my front porch and hang this light. Now I already have a large hook from the ceiling hanging over top of that milk can table. By the way, I have another video for that milk can table there. And I hung it up on the, on the chain that I have and then I sat down in the chair to see if I could see the person that would be sitting across so that I could get it at the right height. It was perfect. Now the wind is blowing so it was really moving around there. Um, but I got it up there, it's all perfect. So what I'm going to do is order a long exterior extension cord and I'm going to drape it around the frame of my windows and back behind that door area where I have my a plug that's on our front porch. 
The plug is on a timer so it comes on from dusk to dawn. Here's the next light and I'm loving how this light turns out. I've got three lampshades. They're about the same style in graduated sizes and I started taking the fabric off like I did on the other lamp. Now the glue that is holding these fabric, the fabric on these shades is heavy duty. It is so strong. So you have to do a fair amount of tugging and pulling and, and all that good stuff. And then I found out something pretty rough on this frame, on this lampshade. When you take the fabric off, the fabric is part of what's holding it all together. So I thought, that's okay, no big deal. I got it figured out. So to remove the fabric from the top part, instead of removing it completely, I just cut it off and I left some of the fabric that was on there. And then I had to take care of getting this lampshade back together. While I decide how I'm going to solve that problem, I'm going to go ahead and grab the other shades and get the fabric off. Now the second shade had the same issue. I started to take the fabric off and the frame itself was being held together with the fabric. So I'm going to have to do this twice and here it is, it's, it's this frame. You can see how those pieces, the ribbing goes into the circle at the top. If y'all know the correct names, the the anatomy of a lampshade, please tell me down in the comments. I don't know the names of this stuff, but you see there I ran into that problem. So what I did was I grabbed this JB Quick Weld that y'all told me about for another project where I had to glue metal pieces together. So I ordered it way back then and I'm just now using it. It's a two part epoxy. You have to mix the parts. I used a toothpick and I put it in the hole and then I was able to put the ribbing piece into back into the hole where it belonged it sets up very quickly so you only have to hold it for a few minutes until it sits but you do have to let it sit overnight to completely dry i had to fiddle with it but i finally got it all together i did this with both lampshades and then i allowed them to dry and they're just perfect and in the meantime because while they're drying i've got to work on something else i had more of these fabric scraps left over and I cut them thinner so they're now only about a half an inch thick because I had I cut them about one inch wide so now they're about a half inch wide grab my glue gun and I just glued them on I like this kind of messy look that this creates and I just glued it all the way around all the way around the top and then also on the ribbing this kind of project's fun to do because there's not a lot of thought to it you're just it's just mindless work of gluing and you know, using your glue gun and if this is so easy, I love this kind of project. And usually when I'm working on something like this, I'm listening to something, whether it's a book by Audible or a podcast. And one of my favorite kind of podcasts to listen to, okay, don't judge me, but one of my favorite podcasts to listen to is either Dateline or 48 Hours. If you are a crime podcast listener, please let me know down in the comments and tell me your favorite uh, show. Is it Dateline? Is it 48 Hours? Is it, uh, there's a couple of, of others out there. I can't bring them to my mind right now. But if you have a favorite podcast, an episode like that, a kind of show like that, let me know down in the comments. Or maybe you have another podcast that you like to listen to. I would love to hear about it because I'm always listening to podcasts. So tell me down in the comments. Recently, I was watching another YouTuber over at Our Upcycled Life, and she gave this tip for adding a short glue stick to your glue gun. So you just use your, the tip of your glue gun, get one end of the stick really hot and melted, and then slide it in and stick it to the other one, and it just makes that whole process super easy. All right, I have all the fabric on the three lampshades and now it's time to figure out how to do the lights. And I'm gonna do a similar thing that I did for the front porch light. Here's another basket that I have. This one is all wire, so I feel like it's gonna work even better. I used more jute twine and I tied the handles of that basket onto one of the lampshades. And then I took that twine and I ran it all the way through each one of those lampshades to secure them all together. Now you'll see here in this one, I have white Christmas lights. Really, it would look better if these were brown, but this is what I have on hand. I may or may not change it down the road, but for now, 
it's okay. The other thing I don't like about these lights is that it's the the LED and they just don't cast as pretty of a light of a color of light as the old fashioned little twinkle lights, but oh well, this is what I have. This is what I'm gonna use. So you can see all three of the lampshades are kind of a different color. I went with the green, the taupe color, and then that blue color. And I ran the string of lights, the plug part, all the way up to the top. And then I used the twine to tie them all together to hold them securely. I also grabbed some chain. You see that silver chain. I didn't have any more of the black chain and I may or may not change it out, I don't know. But I grabbed that chain, I ran it through the center of the the, um, the lampshades, and that, of course, is holding it all together. And then we're going to head out to my back patio and hang this light up. And here it is, oh my gosh, I just love this little lamp so much, hanging over top of our, our little dining area where I spend mornings. We have dinner out here almost every night in the spring and summer and sometimes into the fall when it's still warm. Now, I still have lots of plants to get. You see some chains hanging. I don't have my ferns out yet. We're still getting our patio together. And in fact, stay tuned because in an upcoming video, I'm going to do a little back patio makeover real quick and I want you to see it. But in the meantime, here is the lighting fixture. I love the wonky look of this. And at night when it's on, oh, it just looks so cute. Let's take a look at the final results of these makeovers. So there's the weights and you can see how cute they look in my bathroom. I'm hoping that I actually use them. Here are the corbels. I have a plan for these to hang a curtain, but I didn't get it done for this video. So I'll try to show you that in the future. And then the plate and that spindle, yep, it's a little bird feeder out by our pond. We've had birds visiting it and it's just so cute to watch them. It's very shallow so I can change out that seed anytime. Like when it rains, I'm going to have to empty it out, I know. Maybe I should add drain holes in it. You let me know, should I go back and add some drain holes to this? That wouldn't be an issue, but it really does look cute sitting off of our patio and my dog kind of likes it too because the birds come and he gets to bark at them. Here's the printable artwork that I was telling you about. Now I'll have this sign up down below in the description so that you can sign up to my email and my blog, and then you'll have access to all the free printables that I have. I have this one and lots more, and a lot of them are seasonal. So you're, you're going to want to get on that list. Here's the salt sitting beside my stove, ready to cook dinner. I better get in there and start cooking. This is the lampshade that we started out with and we made this beautiful one for the front porch. Very simple with scraps, leftover lights from Christmas, a thrift store basket, and it just lights up our front porch perfectly. I love how it turned out. Then we have this little bird. I don't know guys, I, I don't like how it turned out. I put this bird on the mantle back on our, our fireplace in our bedroom and Oh my goodness, I don't like it. The more I look at it, the less I like it. Tell me what to do with it, please. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.